CN, happy Sunday, happy new year. It's so great to be back with you again. We made it through an unprecedented year of challenges, but of blessings at the same time. God has continued to make a way for us. If you're watching right now, I want you to turn the volume up, grab your family together. We're going to worship. We're going to sing together because God is good. And if you're looking forward to see him move again this year, we're going to put our feet together right now. We're going to sing. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. Yes, you made a way. Standing here, not knowing how you'll get through the test, but holding on to faith you know best. Yes, nothing can catch you by surprise. You've got this figured out, and you're watching us now. But when we feel as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arms and step in, yeah. And everything we need, you supply. You got this in control and now we know that you made a way when our backs were against the walls and it looked as if it was over and you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a you made a way And now we're here Looking back from where we've come from Because of you and nothing we've done To deserve the love and mercy you've shown your grace was strong enough to pick us up and you made a way when our backs were when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made Away. You, you made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You, you made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way Cause you move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles, and there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made you move mountains, yeah. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles, and there is nothing, yeah, that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made and you move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With your power, you perform miracle, and there is nothing, yeah, that's impossible. And we're standing here 
only because you made and we're standing here only because you made and we're standing here only because you made our way oh don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know how but you did it made a way don't know how but you did it made a way don't know how but you did it say you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way Don't know how but you did it you made a way Don't know how but you did it you made a way And don't know why but I'm grateful you made a way Don't know why but I'm grateful you made a way And don't know why but I'm grateful you made a way and don't know why but i'm grateful you made a way don't know why but i'm grateful you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way and i'm standing here only because you made And I'm standing here only because you made And I'm standing here only because you made You made a way By his stripes we are here By his nail past hands we're free By his blood we're washed clean Now we have the victory The power of sin is broken Jesus overcame it all Yes. Oh, he is one of freedom. Jesus has won it all. Say, You have won the victory. You sit it in majesty oh, You are the reason king Death could death could not hold you down no oh, You are the reason king and you sit it you sit it in majesty God is risen, He is alive, He won the victory, He reigns on high. Our God is risen, He is alive, He won the victory, He reigns on high. Our God is risen. He is alive. He 
has won the victory, yes, he reigns on high. Our God is risen, he is alive. He won the victory, he reigns on high. Hallelujah, you have won. that you are seated in heaven because of that God we pour out our hearts in worship this morning there's none like you God Father meet with us again in this time of worship renew our hearts God When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart oh I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required yeah. You search much deeper within Through the way things are been You're looking into my heart Oh I'm coming back to the heart of worship Where it's all about you Yes, it's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it Yes, it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. You're the king, king of endless words. No one could express how much you desire. Though I'm weak and one. Yes, all I have is yours. Every single prayer. Oh, 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 I'll give you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. Yeah. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart oh, I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you 
Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made. It. Yes, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, where it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. Yes, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Say it again. It's all about you. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. Emmanuel Church, it's good to be with you today as we worship our second Sunday in January 2021. Um, it was good to be together last week, but uh, we had the privilege of hearing from Pastor Steve, our district superintendent, about Ready, Set, Go and his his challenge for us and inspiration for us for the year ahead, 2021. But today it's really a privilege for me to uh, be with you, to share with you, to preach today, to talk to to us, to our family, to our church as we enter into 2021. I really believe 2021 is going to be a significant year for us as a church, for me personally, for our, our the direction and, and um, uh, ministries of the church and at, as we continue to serve God in our community. Um, great things are in store for us. But as we've uh, gone through this week, as I'm, as I'm recording this message, it's Thursday. And so this is right after all the things, the day after all the things happened on our television screen south of the border and uh, uh, the unthinkable type things where they broke into the Capitol building at the, 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 uh, in Washington, D.C. And I know we're in Canada and that's in the States, but uh, as I've been talking to people and as we shared on our Faces group and prayed together um, last night on Wednesday night, it's something a lot of us have been thinking about and hits us kind of hard and and uh, kind of fills our own heart and mind with a sense of uncertainty and wonder um, uh, as we enter into this new year. So I wanted to just uh, share some some uh, a message this morning to encourage us as a congregation as we're uh, stepping into a new year, to, to encourage us as individuals as we're stepping into this new year, but also to uh, speak some uh, some scriptural truth into our the current situation of the world and how we respond to that and where our confidence comes from. Um, a lot of times when we turn over a new year, uh, it's the time when people are wondering, what are we going to do? Like they're making goals, uh, you know, losing weight, getting more exercise and those kind of things. They're pretty common. Um, sometimes they're bigger, like um, maybe trying to um, uh, get free of an addiction to no longer be uh, addicted to something, no longer be um, in chains that, uh, to that addiction. Maybe it's relationships that have been broken that you're wanting to, um, to bring healing to. The, the list can go long, but a lot of times what I find is that uh, the goals we make at the beginning of the year sound a lot like the ones we made for last year and the year before and the year before. And there's a reason for that, and that's because a lot of times we don't follow through with them. Uh, we get tired of it, uh, of trying and then failing. And sometimes we just give up and say, I just, it's never going to get there. And so as we stand at the beginning 
of a new year. And as with those kind of thoughts reverberating behind us, uh, what gives us confidence that this year would be different? What gives us confidence that this day will be different? How, how come? How can we believe that today uh, will be the beginning of a growth for us as a church, a growth for us as individuals, for change in our culture? How can we begin to think that some some of the things that the political um, uncertainty and the racial unrest and uncertainty that we experience on an ongoing basis, and now the pandemic uncertainty, how, how can we find confidence in knowing that those things uh, those things don't have to define us, that God is bigger than those things. And we can have confidence that in spite of all that, we can grow, we can learn, we can change, uh, we can become more like the people God wants us to be. So where, where is that confidence? Where does it come from? So today I wanted to, I wanted to call your attention to Revelation chapters 2 and 3. Now I'm not going to read the whole thing um, because it's long, two, two full chapters, but you will remember it as the, they're the seven letters to the churches. There are the churches, to, letters to seven churches, actually, in the beginning of the book of Revelation. And um, and I, uh, in this letter, in these letters, they are letters to the churches and and uh, the word from God to the churches. And, and we learn a lot as we look at these seven letters side by side about how uh, change comes about in our lives and how God leads us through that change and where we can find our confidence. And so what I want to do is I want to read just one of them. I'll read the last one, but keep your Bibles open and, and maybe um, after the message today, you can go back and read the rest of them because really it's the pattern that we see between the seven of them. It's the pattern that we see that is consistent, that, that teaches us and, and has uh, speaks to us this morning. But we don't have time to read all those, uh, so I'm going to just read the last one, which is Revelation chapter 3, uh, starting with verse 14, to the, the letter to the church in Laodicea. Listen as we read the word this morning. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and I do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich, the white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and to salve and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them with him and he with me to him who overcomes i will give the right to sit at my to sit with me on my throne just as i overcame and sat down with my father on his throne he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches let's pray fathers we enter into this this year with all the uncertainty and all the circumstances and and uh situations that that uh, reverberate through our culture and society and, and just kind of rest heavily upon our hearts and minds. I pray that you would speak to us and encourage us today um, with a word of confidence and a word of hope as we enter into this new year. Lead us, guide us, transform us more and more each day into the people that you want us to be and to, into the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ. Be with us today. In your name we pray. Amen. So as we look at these seven letters, and I know we just read the one, there's a pattern. And the first thing we know in the pattern of these seven letters in Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3 is that every letter begins with a reference to Jesus. I mean, the passage that we read, it started out with, he said, um, these are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. He's talking about Jesus. And in every one of these letters to the churches, which were letters of, of, of uh, invitation 
uh, to change, admonition to change, um, he would start by reference, the letters would all start by referencing who Jesus is, every single letter. And so what we learn from that is that when we're talking about and contemplating the, 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 the idea and the practice of growth and change in our lives, Jesus Christ himself is the source and the standard of the change in our lives. It all begins and ends with him. He's, he's the foundation and the base of it all. So when we're trying to think about who we, the kind of a person we ought to be in 2021, uh, we don't have to search all over and try to find different options. For us, the foundation as, as followers of Jesus, as believers in Jesus Christ, as people who call ourselves Christians, the foundation of our change is Jesus. It, it's not a diet. It, it's not a self-help book. It's not something we read on the internet. Those might be helpful in one way or another. But really the standard for us, the thing that sets the tone and, and, and puts lays out before us the direction and the vision for who we ought to be and our goal our for change, our um, aim of life would be, uh, it, it's, it's all wrapped up in who Jesus is. The very person of Jesus himself. When we're trying to figure out um, the standard for our personal character, who should I be? How should I act? What should my attitudes be? How should I respond in difficulty? What do I do in the midst of, 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 of challenging circumstances? How do I respond in a broken relationship? What do I do? How far do I go to seek and offer forgiveness? How, how much... Should I love the people around me in my world who are like me and the people who are not like, not like me? In all of those things, in every area of personal conduct and personal character, the question really is, who is Jesus? And, and he is the standard. And he is the one who sets the tone and, and is the author and perfecter of our faith. So when the letters went out to the churches and said, hey, we've got some things you need to change, they started by saying, man, here's who Jesus is. Here's who he is. Here's what he is. And it starts and begins and ends uh, with our understanding, our, our, our determination for change, and whatever that change might be starts and ends with Jesus. So it's not only our personal character that starts and ends with Jesus, but if we're trying to decide, especially in this week and in this day and age, what our political views should be, we start with Jesus. It's, and so we don't defend a political position just because it's a political position, if that position is in contrast with what the scriptures say or with who Jesus is. If Jesus says, love your neighbor, but the political position is to, is to uh, um, uh, ostracize your neighbor and, and, and keep away from your neighbor and, 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 and point fingers at your neighbor and accuse your neighbor, then, then, then you are not living up to what Christ has done and who he is in our lives. So even in our political views, and in the decisions we make politically, it's, it's following Jesus and the way he lived his life and the standard for his life that we live. When, we're, when we are um, evaluating what is the mission of the church, Emmanuel Church, uh, 1875 Shepherd Avenue at the corner of Shepherd Avenue and Buckland in the Jane Shepherd community, when we're talking about what's our purpose as a church and we've been there on that corner for, you know, 50 years plus, and what, what, but what does it mean to be the church on that corner, in that building, on our street, in our neighborhood? What does it mean when we're contemplating the, 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 the definition of the mission of the church? It starts and ends with Jesus. And that's where it begins and that's where it ends. And so it's, so any kind of a, of a, of a, of a conversation any kind of a decision on what to do as in our personal lives, as a church, as a culture, as a society, politically and otherwise, it all begins with Jesus. That's what we learn from these letters in Revelations chapter 2 and 3. The letters to the churches on things they needed to change. The first thing it starts with, the first thing you read is Jesus. So let's begin there. Man, I could end my sermon there and just say, hey, let's just focus on Jesus in 2021. 
and all the people say amen. That's exactly what we should do. And it should be our desire and our goal each and every day. But there are more things we want to learn from these passages of scripture from these seven letters. The second thing we notice in it, the pattern of these seven letters, and it's important for us when we're, when we're contemplating a new year and contemplating change and trying to work our way through the challenges of life. The second thing we notice is that there is an intimacy uh, with Jesus. That, that every one of these, he, he says something like, I know who you are. I know what you can do. I know you. And that's powerful. That when we start this, these letters by saying, hey, Jesus is the standard, the one who died on the cross for us and rose again, the one who spoke this world into existence, the one who came as a baby in a manger, and again, the one who died on the cross and rose again for us, that's the standard for our lives. But here's the important thing. He knows you. He knows me. He knows everything about us. And so we don't have to pretend uh, we don't have to hide. We don't have to uh, pretend and uh, like things are differently than they are. We can just come and say, here I am, just as I am without one plea, as the old song goes. That that's how we come to you. There is comfort in that. There is peace in that. In that Jesus knows everything about us. The one who comes to us and dies for us and loves us knows all of our weaknesses knows all of the rough edges, knows all the ways that we have failed, both publicly and privately, knows everything about who we are. And we find that over and over in these passages of scriptures. I know you. In the passage that we read, this last section of, of, of chapter three, here's what he says in verse 15. I know your deeds. I, I know what you've been up to. I know what you think. I know where your heart is. I, I know what your strengths are. I know what your weaknesses are. I know what your greatest fears are. I know what your dreams are. I know you. So there's no one better to be the one to set the tone and the direction for us in our lives, to set the tone and the direction for us in a new year, to lead us and to guide us, than, than Jesus himself. He knows all about us. It's interesting that if we go all the way back to the Old Testament, and a passage of scripture I've preached about numerous times in the, as your pastor, but it's when the people of Israel in Joshua chapter 3 and the surrounding chapters, that they were entering into the, 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 the promised land. Well, they were on this side of the Jordan River. The promised land was on the other side of the Jordan River, and the Jordan River was in flood stage, and yet the instructions were it's time to go over there. No bridge, um, excuse me, no boats, no, you know, stepping stones, just we got to go. And the instructions came that said, hey, we've got this Ark of the Covenant, which was the, 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 the portable presence, the portable uh, demonstration of the presence of God. And so he said, pick up this, pick up this uh, Ark, step into the water, and then stay close to the Ark. In other words, stay close to me, stay close to my presence, Stay close to the one who brought you here. And then the instructions say, this is important. Stay close to me because you have never been this way before. And then you will know which way to go. So see the promise from the Old Testament, uh, it, it, from the beginnings of the Old Testament, all the way to the book of Revelation at the end of the Bible is, is hey, stick close to Jesus. He knows who we are. He knows all about us. And we've never been this way before. Every day is a new day. Every year is a new year. Every challenge is a new challenge. And no matter how big they seem and how daunting they seem, like, like pandemics, like racial injustice that's been going on for hundreds of years, like political unrest that's overwhelming that we can't believe what's happening. When all those things happen, we don't know what to do. We've never been this way before. But here's the instruction. If you stay close to Jesus, he says, I will show you which way to go because you've never been this way before. So it's intimacy with Jesus. It's that closeness with Jesus. He knows who we are. And that's so important. But the interesting thing is, he doesn't just tell us he knows us. He then instructs us. And in some of these passages of scripture, in these seven letters, uh, it's more direct than others. But he will say things like this, I know you, 
and I have this against you. In other words, here's where your life needs to change. Here's where you are displeasing to God. Here's where there is sin in your life. Jesus tells us that. The scriptures say because of our intimacy with him, that, he, that the spirit of God comes and dwells within us and becomes the conscience of our life. And he says, this is the way, walk in it and do this and that. And, and we don't have to try to, you know, uh, wonder and, and, and just kind of try to figure this whole thing out and, 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 and make, a, make it a difficult process. Jesus tells us how to live. He tells us through the scriptures. We read the Bible and he tells us, we learn things in the scriptures. What is true in the scriptures is true today. We learn to interpret it differently. We understand it differently. And that completely changes because, because we're growing and developing as followers of Jesus and, and, as, and as Christian people. But the word of God is the word of God and it is true yesterday, today, and forever. And so we read the word and it shapes us and it, and it speaks to us and it convicts us and it corrects us, and that's what the Word of God does. Then we spend time in prayer, and as we're praying, we're speaking to God, say, God, search me and know my heart. See if there be any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And as we pray that, the Spirit of God speaks to us, and guides us, and directs us, and we have a new sense of direction and leadership in our lives. Man, I've been preaching this last year about don't miss your moment, don't miss your moment. I've been preaching to each of us, to myself included, that while we are in the midst of this pandemic, one of the amazing things that has been a, a benefit and a blessing of the pandemic is that as we've been forced to slow down, as we've been forced to change our, our patterns of life, as we've been forced to change the thing, the way we live, we've been able to hear God more clearly. We've been able to hear God better, and we don't want to miss our moment because God says to us as we listen, he says, this is the way, walk in it. This is what I have for you. So as we pray, as we read the word, God speaks to us, guides us, and directs us and shows us the way. So we're entering into a new year. What does it hold? I don't know. What path should we take? Well, let's just stick close to Jesus and his promises. If we stick close to him, uh, he'll show us the way because we've never been this way before. You know, the church, not just Emmanuel, but the church in universal around the world has faced unprecedented challenges during this pandemic. That all the ways we've done ministry before, all the way we's, ways we've existed as the church before, are, are no longer available to us. This last week, um, our uh, at one at the food bank, one of the people came through and said, "Man, Pastor Bill, I just don't like. I, I just can't. I, I just don't like it that we can't be together. I want to be together. I want to come to worship." Well, that's true of all of us, but the reality of it is, the world is changing, and and here's 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 a hard truth that we have yet to really fully embrace. That once the, 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 the pandemic is over, once we get the vaccines and are, can worship together again, life isn't going to be exactly like it was before. Some of the things that have changed are going to keep, are going to stay, and they're going to still be different. And I don't know what those ones are. I just know the world is changing so much, and the pressures on the church, on how to be the church in, in this day and age, in 2021, in the current circumstances, in all the things we're going through, uh, this is new territory for us. We've never been this way before, and yet the promise is, um, man, the promise is follow the presence of God. And he'll lead us because we've never been this way before. So when we come to Revelation chapter 2 and 3, it starts with Jesus. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. And it's the foundation of our, of our um, change process. But it's not a Jesus who's removed from us. The second thing we learn is it's a Jesus who knows us, all about us, loves us yet the same, and still tells us, hey, here's where you need to grow. Here's what needs to change. Here's what you need to do in your life. So he tells that. The next thing we learn from this is that's not where the process starts, stops. It's not just that we uh, are based on Jesus and we get close to Jesus and we learn from Jesus. The next step in the process of transformation and change is so powerful in the pattern of these seven, um, seven letters to the churches. 
because the next I would call it the command for the people because over and over and over again he says repent uh, Revelation chapter 2 verse 5 repent and do the things you did at first Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 be faithful even to the point of death Revelation chapter 2 verse 16 repent Revelation chapter 2 verse 25 hold on to what you have until I come Revelation chapter 3 verses 2 and 3 wake up strengthen what remains Remember what you have received and obey it. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11, hold on to what you have. And then what we read at the beginning from Revelation chapter 3, verses 19 and 20, be earnest, repent, and open up the door of your heart. What does repent mean? That's the word that keeps coming up over and over again. Repent simply means change. It simply means if you were going in one direction, when Jesus speaks to us, and when Jesus points out in our lives something that needs to change, then we decide to turn and go the other way and follow the directions he's led for us, meaning to change and to repent. Repent simply means to turn around and, and go the other way. And so the, the next step after Jesus speaks to us, the next step after, after, after the, the word of God uh, you know, instructs us and points us in a direction in our lives, in our church, in our journeys together is to be obedient to him and say yes and do it follow through do what they what the doctor orders you might say do you know speaking of doctors and i have a little bit of experience with this um do you know a lot of times patients don't do what doctors tell them to do you know that i i mean people go to doctors and, and they get uh, a diagnosis for something or in the regular checkup, the doctor says, man, you need to do this. You need to lose some weight or you need to get some exercise or you need to change your diet or you need to do this or that or whatever. Do you know what happens a lot of times? People don't do it. It's crazy, but it's true that a lot of times human nature is to do, even though we know what we're supposed to do, human nature is to not do it. And the same thing spiritually. God is faithful to, to us. And the Spirit of God is faithful to us to point us the way and to say, hey, I know you, and these are the things I have against you, and the areas you need to change, and how you need to conform to the likeness of the Son of God. And he tells us that, and a spiritual, you know, a spiritual tendency is to hear it, even be humbled by it, but quite often not to do it. And that's where the problem is. That's where we come, where we find ourselves that, we're making the same um, goals and resolutions this year as we did last year, as we did the year before, as we did the year before. And, and we keep keep making these same determinations for spiritual growth over and over and over again. And they sound like the ones we made last time and the one we made before that. It's because we don't follow through and we don't do the things that he asks us to do. His instructions in these seven letters, the instructions in these seven letters are very clear. Repent. Do it. Don't just hear the word. Put it to action and do it. The passage we read from chapter 3, uh, the last letter of these seven letters says, Be earnest. Repent. Open up the door of your heart. Let me in so that I can guide and direct you and we can eat together. Obedience. It's the key, not just hearing, but doing what God says to us. I don't know what 2021 holds. Again, we've never been this way before. But here's where our confidence comes from. When we're drawing near to Christ and we're allowing him to speak into our heart and mind. And when we're listening to what he has to say to us. And when we determine to just follow where he leads we can have confidence because God will lead us. Christ will lead us wherever he wants us to be. And what a great thing that will be. There's one last step that we learn from these. And um, it's the final thing he says in, in these letters. And, and I'll just read two of them, actually. Uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 7 says this. He who has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give you the right to eat from the tree of life, 
which is in the paradise of God. And then chapter, the end of, uh, end of chapter three, to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Hey, the last step in our transformation process, the last step in our growth in 2021 and beyond is to, is to persevere, is to overcome, is to stick to it, is not just say yes to God today, but on tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, and every single day. Keep saying yes to God. And as we do that, there will be days when the challenges will seem overwhelming. There will be days when we're standing at the edge of a flooded river and the promised land seems far away. There will be days when there's a wall around the, the city of Jericho and we're not sure how we're going to get in there. There will be days when we're standing up facing a giant and all we've got is a sling and five stones. There will be days when, 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 when we're um, uh, facing a fiery furnace and, and aren't sure how we're going to survive without getting burned. There will be all kinds of days in our lives as individual believers in our own personal journey, as a church, when we keep saying yes to God, some of those days are going to be days of extreme faith and, and, and uh, extreme tests. And, and our challenge is to say yes, even in the difficult times. To say yes, no matter what. Because the last step is to overcome is to keep at it, is to persevere, is to not give up. Hey, I don't know what 2021 holds for you. I don't know what 2021 holds for me. Our, we're going to be working together this year to figure out what 2021 work means for us as a church. We're going to constantly be asking that question. But here's what I do know. God is with us. And we can be confident that where God leads us, God will provide for us. That, that, where, that whatever God asks for us to do, he already knows our weaknesses. He already knows our shortcomings. He already knows our talents and gifts and abilities because he gave them to us as well. And he taps us on the shoulder and he says, here's what I have for you. Here's my direction for you as a, as a follower of Jesus, as a church as a society. And when we say yes to him, 2021, no matter what comes, will be a year when we will grow closer to him. It'll be a year when we will grow deeper in our relationship with God. will be a year that we'll overcome whatever challenges. will be a year of, of effective life and ministry and contentment each and every day because we're following the one who made us and letting him lead. Frightening things politically, frightening things pandemically, if that's a word, frightening things ongoing racial issues, and the list goes on and on. But God is still on the throne. And when we listen to him and draw near to him and stay close to him, he promises to lead us, to guide us, to show us the way. And if we say yes to him every day and overcome and persevere even in the difficult times, then we will hear the final on that final day, well done, good and faithful servant. Hey, join with me in following this path for 2021. Join with me in saying yes to God in 2021. Join with me in having confidence that the God we serve is able and he will lead us and guide us. May you be blessed in 2021 as we enter into this year together. Let's pray. Father, this has been a year, a, a week of uncertainty followed by a year of uncertainty and all kinds of things happening. <clears throat> Excuse me, as we turn over to a new year, we put our trust in you. Will you lay out the path before us? Will you be the one who leads us and guides us? 
I mean, the scripture we talked about, we read at the end here, it says, you know, that you're going to knock on the door of our hearts. We're just supposed to open the door. And we often use that scripture as a passage, remind, as, as, a, as a passage talking about entering into a relationship with you, allowing you into our lives. And that's certainly one of the things we want for each of us in 2021. But it also reminds us that you open the doors. You show us which doors to walk through. And would you do that for us in 2021? Be with your people. Some who are today facing significant health challenges. Some who today are, are facing, you know, significant, you know, surgeries and, 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 and difficult diagnosis. Some today who are facing financial challenges, how we're going to make ends meet as we go into this new year. Some of, uh, of your people today, it's about the roof overhead and the food on our table. Some of us, Father, it's about what job to take and where to work and where not to work. Some of us, Father, to, collectively it's about where you're going to lead us as a church and continue to lead us and guide us as a church through these uncertain times. Whatever the prayer requests are, whatever the needs are, we trust you. We commit to follow you. And we commit to say yes to you wherever you might lead. May your kingdom come and your will be done in this place in this church, and in our lives today and throughout the year ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're a faithful God, Time. 
time and time again Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 say I see I see you move You move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way When there was no way And I believe I'll see you do it again I see you move You move the mountains And I believe yeah, I'll see you do it again Oh Yeah I see you move Yeah, yeah, yeah I see you move You move the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again Oh, and I believe I'll see you do it again I'll see you do it again Oh, I'll see you do it again I'll see you do it again oh. You promised us times Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence Never, you never fail me yet. Oh, 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 this is my confidence. Yes, I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. And I never will forget So you never fail me yet And I never will forget Yes, you never fail me yet And I never will forget Oh I want to invite you to join with me this morning in the Sacrament of Communion. I know it's not the first Sunday of the month, but last week we were worshiping together with the district, and it was a privilege and pleasure to do that. And because of that, we didn't get a chance to have our communion service together. So today, uh, we want to uh, spend some time as we close our service together, uh, breaking the bread together and um, coming to this uh, sacrament, the communion table together. Uh, we, this is a great way to begin 2021. See, this is the physical reminder of what the scriptures just told us, that it's the, be the beginning of it all, the author and perfect of our faith begins and ends with Jesus. And that's what this sacrament is about. It, it reminds us that uh, Jesus not only broke the bread uh, and, and drank the cup, but he told us to do the same. And, and he, when he told us, he said, man, this is my body which was broken for you. This is my blood, which was shed for you. And he was saying to us, reminding us that our hope is found in nothing less than in Jesus' blood and righteousness, that he is our hope. And as we go through the, 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 the actions of physically taking the bread, physically drinking the cup, they remind us of the body and blood of Jesus. And Jesus says, this is my body. This is my blood broken and shed for you. And so it's that call back to the person of Jesus, call back to our faith in him and a demonstration of who he is and a foundation of our faith. And so today I invite you to uh, make sure uh, everyone in your home or if you're there by yourself uh, that you have a bread, something to eat, 
and and a, and a cup of something to drink. Uh, and they don't have to be the official um, communion elements like we do in the church, but a loaf of bread or a piece of bread or a cracker and something to drink uh, will suffice in these uh, online uh, circumstances and these, in these unusual days um, that have been unusual, but have been the usual unusual for the last 10 months. So let's, let's begin together. Um, let's take the, the bread. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And so we break the bread and we eat together and are thankful. On the same night, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. Uh, whenever you drink it, drink it with thanksgiving. Um, it's, it's, it's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all our sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's drink together. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your faithfulness to us today. We give you thanks for the message that you've given to us today. As we enter into 2021, we do so with great confidence because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. As we stand on that promise, as we commit to follow you, we enter into this year with confidence. Lead us, guide us, protect us, and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. I hope you have a good week. We'll see you soon, and I look forward to seeing you next week as we worship together in ECN Online. God bless you. Thank you.